Hey guys, it's been a while. This is Gabe Posada from Jack Watley Discus, and I'm bringing you on a Sunday, a very hot Sunday, the new build. So you guys can see how we did it. 200 20 gallon tank breeding system. Just for you guys. It's been a while, but now you know why. Enjoy. One hundred and sixty twenty gallon highs just came online today. We were afraid that the plumbing and the pump that I chose wasn't going to work properly. That the pump wasn't going to be powerful enough. The systems weren't going to get full. I didn't know what I was talking about. The pump is so damn powerful that if I turn them wide open will overflow each and every single one of the 160 gallons, 20 gallon height. As you can see, we designed it so that the top tanks drain directly into the bottom overflow. Uh, these already have the covers on them so we don't lose any babies. But I'm going to show you over where we ran out. I have to order more and you can see the plumbing the way it works that drain drains into the bottom tank and each one has its own intake so we were talking about how powerful the pump is we literally have 160 20 gallon tanks with the valves almost shut to withstand the pressure of the pump Okay, right now the tanks are a little cloudy because the water just went in and there's condensation building up till the system builds up temperature. So you can see that the top tanks are getting water. They're draining through three quarter inch pipe, then draining down the bulkheads. And ideally, we want to do this so that the water from the top doesn't contaminate the bottom. I'm going to have to hook up smaller hoses in here and just put them right through because these hoses are three quarter inch and that's a one inch pipe underneath and if we stick them through there's not enough drain for the bottom tank so don't worry I'll invent something and I'll bring it up to you guys so you guys can get an idea but basically all of them are working every single one the used tanks obviously are going to need to be cleaned a lot of calcium buildup but the idea was to get the system running, see if there was anything wrong, okay? And so far, the drainage system is working like a charm. No leaks whatsoever. We still got a lot of work to do, as you can see by the plumbing underneath, the pipes, okay? This is the sump. We knew we were gonna suck up a lot of water when we do the water changes in the breeding system. So I'm gonna explain everything as best I can. These two float valves are one inch float valves. We put a ball valve on there in case of an emergency. Underneath here is where the pump sucks up water from the sump. There's the sump running. I'll get you a shot of the other side where the spray bars are. Okay, but I'll walk on the other side and show it to you. Um, this here is an emergency overflow. So we don't want the office, which is right there, or will be right there, to get flooded. So in case there's an emergency, the pump shuts down for any reason, the tanks overflow, what ends up happening is this drain, which is a two inch drain, will drain eventually directly into the gutter drain underneath or the storm drain that we have right there. We're going to have to connect it, but for now we just left it alone like that because the water will run and on the angle it will go down. Okay? That's one way. The other safety feature that we put in was a two inch check valve. Right now you can see it's operational. 
okay? If for any reason the pump shuts down, the power goes out, remember there's 160 feet of two inch pipe on the bottom and on the top, so that's a lot of water retention. This flapper will go down and it won't let the water return to the sump, so it'll, it'll avoid us a lot of problems. And here you can see some of the water going in because some of the tanks are requiring more water. I'm going to go over on the other side and give you a little heads up of what's going on on the other side. This is now the left side, the opposite side. Same amount of tanks. 160 altogether, so there's literally 80 on this side and 80 on the other side. It's quite a long trek. Uh, like I said, the tanks are sweating because it's brand new water and it's acclimating to the tank temperature, to the uh, actual ambient temperature. That's why they sweat. You can see that there's aeration being caused by the Venturis that are in each single one, one of these tanks. Same thing under here. Top tanks drain into the bottom tanks. Obviously, all this won't be seen once those uh, slotted pipes are put in to prevent the babies from being sucked in. But everything is completely operational. I'm going to show you the drains underneath on both sides. Okay, this is how we did them. We did them like this on purpose because we realized that when we do them short, you end up cracking the tanks. Remember, this glass is very thin. And so the bulkhead doesn't like to move around. And when you move them around, um, I'm going to show you a perfect example of what happens. I've got one here. There's the bulkhead. And there's the crack right down the center because, like a dumbass, I was trying to put that one inch uh, hose right there into here. And I was pushing up so hard that I thought it was made out of metal, and it wasn't. It's made out of glass. So this is the end result. Perfectly good tank destroyed. This is the sump. Uh, we're more than likely going to put more spray bars, only because we want to open up the system more. Uh, you can see how oh, water going in, because water going out. This will eventually be filled with bio balls. Uh, the water runs through there and then goes to the other side. You can see the flow valves that I showed you from the other end. On this uh, aluminum table, we're going to set up a giant, uh, it's a sand filter. It'll be a giant sand filter, but instead of being filled with uh, sand, it's going to be filled with K1 media. So we're going to design that system ourselves. Um, I have them coming in really, really soon. Uh, and once we get those operational, I will show you. And there's two types of K1s we're going to be using. This is uh, one of the sand filters, which will be filled with uh, K1 media. And uh, just to give you a reference of the size, it's a big one. Okay. And the K1 media came in the other day, and there it is in front of the forklift. So I'm going to show you now when we walk into the hatchery, the main place. I mean, it's still a little messy, but I want you guys to get an idea of the other type of K1. And I'm positive that you can see the movement through there. Okay, that's all K1 media. The new one, I believe it's called MB08. And I'm going to give you a bird's eye view. We just put that in yesterday. So a lot of it is still floating. Eventually it'll start coming down. And then it'll start mixing the same way that you see with the light. All of this stuff mixing. Okay. And this system here, again, same table, same sump underneath, is controlling this entire rack. So we're going to be over filtered, over water changed, and everything as healthy as we can make it. So we can bring you guys the best fish on earth. And you can see that some of the altums that we received are already there on the quarantine again. 
some of the albino long fan bushinos, future breeding stock because we plan to breed these as well so we never run out. Um, I know you're going to ask me what they're eating and they're eating uh, red bell peppers just because they became available. <clears throat> the system is holding clown loaches, it's holding autos which are some of the fattest I've ever seen. Okay, It's holding orange lasers. It's holding on the other side the uh, Flash Emperor Flacos. You can see the other systems completely independent of this one. Holding some of our future breeding stock. Here's some of the Flacos. Mustards. More mustards in a larger size. You can see a Flash Emperor there actually gorging themselves. Okay, and they get into it, they shred this stuff. So, uh, I'm hoping you guys are enjoying the build. It's a Sunday. I'm here. I realize I've been neglecting you guys. And uh, it's because I've been so damn busy. And I can't wait for this place to be completely cleaned up. So we can get some of these puppies into the breeding system. Because I'm going to be honest with you. There's so many of them future breeders that <clears throat> we're going to need a lot of tank space, a lot of tank space, a lot of tank space to be able to house all these breeding pairs, but it'll be the only way that we can ensure that we will have enough fish for everybody. We won't need to rely on anybody and everything will be really close. So I hope you guys enjoyed my pleasure bringing you this video i'm sorry about the noise but it is what it is and i'm trying to get something out there because i know you guys enjoy this so much as much as i love building you guys like seeing what i do so here's the new build absolutely stunning it is as big as you can dream there are 200 tanks in the system which is unreal, unreal the size of this system. All right, so thank you guys for watching. Again, I'm Gabe Posada, a very sweaty Gabe Posada on a Sunday, bringing you this video.